I mean, Michael, if you insist on talking draft, I mean, listen, you know, that's not exactly yeah. my thing. But I mean, if you're going to twist my arm, sure, why not? Let's talk about scouting reports. Tom Brady and Mac Jones, I'm seeing them, seeing them in a lot of the same sentences lately. Let's talk of Mac Jones skyrocketing our updraft boards since the Senior Bowl uh, into the top 10. Carolina's a popular destination at number eight. I've been sitting on this quote for a while. I've, I had this in my feed weeks ago. This is Charlie Weiss, our old buddy Charlie Weiss. Mr. Uh, two things, make that three things. Make that Talk three. about being around good players. Yeah, he was around good players, but playing on a team with a bunch of stars, who is the leader of the offense? He also had to make all those throws. I think the kid's an excellent quarterback. He has less holes than just about anybody. If you're looking for a guy that's going to be running for 30 yards on a regular basis, that's not your guy. Charlie Weiss goes on to say, but he can move in the pocket and from the pocket and run the ball when he absolutely needs to. Let me say that again. He can move in the pocket and from the pocket and run the ball when he absolutely needs to. When you talk about Trevor Lawrence, what makes him so special is that he can do everything Mac Jones can and he's athletic. Justin Fields, really good player. Zach Wilson, really good player. The kid from North Dakota State, Trey Lance, really good player. But this guy, Mac Jones, he's the one making all the plays. All he does is win and throw completions. You know, I was thinking about that too, Michael Holly. You know, people, and, and this is something that you've heard over the years is when it comes to scouting quarterbacks. I remember it was the Jay Cutler deal when he was coming out of Vanderbilt. Guys that, quote unquote, do more with less get so much love in the pre-draft process. Like, Absolutely. oh, wow. Like, look, he didn't have any receivers. He didn't have any this, that, and the other. Yeah. Great. It's not making excuses for him. And, Imagine and what he would do. to fall in love with him, right? Right. Right. On the flip side, when you go to a program, you know, once upon a time, it was, it was USC, now it's Alabama. You go to a program, you're surrounded by a lot of talent. You get dinged a lot of times for that. People say, well, you know, he had an offensive line. He had a clean pocket all the time. He was throwing the first round receivers. Is he really that good? So let's just say Mac Jones is a beneficiary of his circumstances, his surroundings, and his supporting cast. Isn't that the plan? Isn't that the idea? Like, if you're a general manager or a head coach, isn't your yeah. obligation to, to support your quarterback with talent? Like, don't you plan on giving him good receivers? Don't you plan on giving him an offensive line? Like, of course he did well with a good supporting cast. Most quarterbacks, including the greatest of all time, looks little better with a, a, a good supporting right. cast. So, we missing with the Mac this Jones year, didn't we? is just a, yeah, he's just a product of Alabama. I like this kid. I like him a lot. And it's not just because of people comparing him to Brady or, or people hyping him up. I don't know how much you've had a chance to actually watch him, Michael. He can spin that thing, and he puts right. the ball where it needs to be. He's a fun player to watch. Yeah, I've watched him quite a bit. As a matter of fact, I watched him in his last game. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of heartbreaking watching him play. Uh, throw for over 400 yards, nearly 500 in a national championship game. I can't remember who they played that day, but uh, they, they played pretty well. Look, I've said many times, Mike, uh, when we talk about interviewing, we talk about interviewing professional athletes and professional coaches, I always say, just remember they're people. Don't get caught up in the title, just they're people. And I feel the same way about NFL evaluators. Just as you and I and everybody listening to us, watching us, um, just as we have all had some extra time during the pandemic to do some reflection, and think about the way our lives used to be and think about how our lives now are now and you're, you're inside more, you're watching more TV. In the case of NFL evaluators and scouts, they're watching more film and watching more film than ever. And with this, during this process, I think we're going to see it. Mac Jones is going to continue to rise. Carolina at eight, he's not going to make it to Carolina at eight. That's too late. Mac Jones, it's too I can, late. I can just feel this. I can feel this. He's going to be, he's on the Trubisky program. I think he's better than Trubisky, but I'm saying Trubisky program. Ooh, what? He went, no, he went second? Whoa. Whoa. He's on the, he's on the Daniel Jones program. What, what? He went number six? 
Mac wait, Jones. Do me a favor. Be- wait, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on. Do me a favor. I, I get what you're saying, but can we do it? Because we both love Mac Jones, and you're being complimentary of Mac Jones. I don't think yeah. the best way to be complimentary of Mac Jones is to liken his rise to that of Mitch Trubisky and Daniel Jones. <laughs> I know that's not no, what no. you mean, but it just no, feels no, I do. weird. It, it is, it is what I mean. You say Mitch I'm not Trubisky. saying he's saying... Trubisky should not have gone two. That was ridiculous. Okay. You know, well, maybe Mac Jones shouldn't. Either. Daniel Jones should I, I not know. have gone six. May, and maybe, maybe Mac Jones shouldn't go in, in the top five either. I think he's going to go in the top five. I, you, there's certain players so, okay. you just feel. So, so, so do you see? You feel that momentum. I feel it. I feel it. He's going in the top five. All right. So this is Kuyper's latest mic dr- mock draft. Excuse me. Uh, he's yes. got Mac at eight. So you're saying it's too late. So is there a team in the previous seven picks that you think drafts him outright, or do you see somebody moving up for him? And if so, okay. I, I, I see somebody moving up for him. I'll tell you who would, and, and it's so obvious. Um, that's why Bill Belichick's probably not happy don't with Charlie it. Weiss. Right, he's probably not happy. That, and I don't think he's I the next Tom Brady. I don't think he's Brady. I don't. No, no, no. no I'm not going yeah, there. No, of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Yeah. He doesn't remind me of Brady. What I'm saying is that they are desperate. I think the Patriots are desperate for a quarterback. And mm-hmm. an Alabama guy. Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, you know, all the connections. Uh, it makes a lot of sense that the Patriots would want him. I think they would want him more than Trey Lance. I think they would want him more uh, than, than Justin Fields. I think he fits. I don't see it. He fits. I do. I, I do. It. Watch. Um, no, I'm, wh- I'm not doing. I'm, you know, I'm saying I don't, I don't see them being aggressive. I don't think. I, if you're Bill Belichick, Ooh. I don't see them being aggressive to move up for a quarterback. Okay. I, I, a, I don't. Two things. I don't see them being aggressive to move up for a quarterback at the expense of other draft assets. Two. I don't see them being aggressive to move up for a quarterback and plugging that rookie quarterback in and asking him to play day one. Mature though Mac Jones may be. And listen, man. I know I'm speaking to the authority here. This is like it's like my 14 um, year old telling me how life works. Okay. The, 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 this is like my 14 year old telling me how life works. Like you know I'm you know I'm 41, right? Like so I'm telling you this. And you'd be like, you know, I've written like five books about this organization, right? So look, I, I get who I'm talking to on this subject. I get it. But, you know, man, like, you see, they've gone, they went so long having hit the jackpot in the sixth round. And not to say that they are desperate for a quarterback. Desperate. But Belichick, Belichick moves back, not up, not like talking about it. You know, I, I, if, if Mac thirsty. fell to them at 15, that's one thing. He's thirsty. He's, he's parched. parched. You think so, huh? All right. He's parched. Okay. He's parched. Okay. Yes. And yes. This, guy, this guy does make a lot of sense. He ain't the next Tom Brady, but I get, I get the Brady comparisons in that he's not wowing you athletically. He's athletic enough, and he's, you know, he's an accurate passer, and he's a leader. So... That's where the Brady stuff comes in. I, I get it. Nobody's saying he's going to win seven Super Bowls or that he's going to play for 20 years and Brown is an all-time great. So, you know, pump the brakes on shooting down the brakes. Look at those numbers, it's Mike. A compliment, not an expectation. Mike. It's a compliment, not a projection. Um, Mike, look at those numbers. Look at that. Look at that lower third. Look at that. Look at those numbers against no, Ohio great. State. He played great. He played oh. great. So you got the Patriots going. So you got the Patriots going well into the top 10. No, you're, you're, no, you're saying you're asking me which. I don't think I don't think he'll be there for the Patriots. I don't think the Patriots can go from 15 to five. I think he makes the most sense for the Patriots. He'd be a good quarterback for them. They really need him. I can see a oh, team yeah, agree getting that. ahead of them. I can see a team getting ahead, and then maybe it's Carolina. Maybe Carolina goes from eight to five because they feel the momentum. It's like every year, every year uh, on around the draft, not just on draft day, but leading up to the draft. And this is the fun part. When you wind up uh, ditching us, you're ditching us all, all your loyal fans, and going to work for an organization, you'll find that this is one of the coolest parts of working in an NFL front office is that whole art of draft position, of knowing like you fall in love with the guy and everybody tells you, well, he's going to be there in the fourth round, and you're just antsy because you're like, he's so good, though. He shouldn't be in the fourth round. He should be in the second round. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and you're just kind of playing that game. You're making your phone calls. It's like a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot of reporting in it, too. 
you're calling around, you're using your instincts, you're using common sense, you're figuring out what teams have draft capital, and you're just waiting there. And I think that's what's going to happen uh, here with Mac Jones. Every year, there's a guy who just keeps shooting up draft boards. One year it was uh, Bruce Irvin. And I, I know Bruce Irvin hadn't turned into a great player, but he was projected as like a late first round pick. And he winds up going in the middle of the first round. So I, I think Mac Jones is, is the candidate this year who ascends from top 10 to top five. And if I were still I think doing you, I think my bets, your money, i put a little something on. I think it's because there's also, it's a, uh, it's a seller's market, the product being quarterbacks. Like as many young quarterbacks as there are, there are still teams who are desperate for long-term answers at the position, if not immediate fixes. I think the main thing is who's, who's driving this. And you're right, he might go into the top five, if you want him, mainly because everybody's enamored with your boy, Zach Wilson. So it seems like the hot spot for the second quarterback is the second overall pick of the draft. So if, if, if the run is going to start really early. So if, if, if you got two off the board by the time the first two picks happen, whether it's the Jets or somebody moving into the Jets slot, then you have the fourth pick in Atlanta where, you know, it's like, you at the grocery store, you don't need milk, but since you're there, you might as well get it. It's like you you at the fourth slot, you might as well get this quarterback while you're here since your other one is 36 years old, right? So three of the first four picks are probably going to be quarterbacks. And so whereas picks three and five currently, Miami and Cincinnati don't need quarterbacks. And the Eagles, you don't expect to take a quarterback at six. Nor do you expect the Lions to take one now, given how much money I don't know. is still tied up in Jared Goff and how high they seem to be on Jared Goff. Well, all of a sudden, you're at eight. And so, remember Charles Robinson? Remember first... what Charles Robinson told us? Wasn't it, wasn't it Chuck? Which part? Who said? He tells us a lot uh, of things. Which part? Well, I know he sure does. Unbelievable. But he said, yeah. I'm not convinced that the Lions won't go quarterback. At, well, at there you seven. go. Which is all the more reason. So, you know, and, and even the Eagles, the, 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 they tanking, got the tanking Eagles. Is Jalen Hurts? The, does he have the, the job? tanking Eagle? But they, but they may, they may decide to do. A couple of years ago, go back to the. Uh, you mentioned Mitch Trubisky. The Niners went from two to three. Because and found a way to, to to finagle picks out of uh, out of the Bears at the two spot. Maybe the Eagles decide, hey, you know, you want to get ahead of Carolina? We're your, we're your team. I don't know. I just think it's because there's going to be an early run on these quarterbacks, and if you want one, you got to get there early. It's like the sneakers app. It's like Top Shot. You got to get in line early, you know, because they're going to be gone by the, if, if you sit around and decide to let a quarterback fall to you. Um, so it'll be interesting. But I, I, look, Big Mac got special sauce, bro. Big Mac, I, I, I think the kid's good. I think the kid is really good. And uh, I, the, 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 the knock should... on him being that he played with talent, that ideally you want all your quarterbacks playing with talent. We should point out he to brought people, out the best in I, them. I know you know how long did you cover the NFL? Like from from the Globe Time, ESPN. How many years did you cover the NFL? Was it ten? Eight? Closely? Six? Eight? Eight? Yeah, about eight, eight years. years. Closely about. All eight right, years. you're eight. Yeah. In your eight years of covering the NFL, you know this. This is mm -hmm. the time, and you can't take it personally. The best reporters don't take it personally. You just got to know you bake this into any kind of reporting and analysis that you do. It is March 1st, and from March 1st all the way to draft day, you're going to be lied to about 100 times. Yes. Roughly 100 yes. times. Your, 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 yes. your best sources might lie to you, or they, might, they may not lie to you. Or they just you. may not know. They may not know. Or, or they also I'm, may I'm, not I'm know. I'm saying there's lying going on know. within organizations. There's yeah. lying going on within organizations. There are people that you talk to who have titles, but who That's ultimately are, are, are in the dark. That's how guarded this That's information so true. is. You know? That's so true. There's yeah. some guys, there's some organizations uh, that that are so secretive and, and so so uh, self-conscious, they may have like two or three, they may have like a dummy draft board. Some of them have dummy draft boards. <laughs>
Some of them. It's like the departed. They, they smoking out these yeah. rats, man. I'm they got a rat you, in their unit and they smoke them out. <laughs> this is all. This that is was... all true stuff. And the other thing that's going to change, yeah. Mike, because I'm not sure, I, I, you know, how, how I feel about Zach Wilson. But once again, it's early March. So once we get to the point where teams are, whether it's in person or Zoom, one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings with these prospects, some prospects are going to interview better than they expect. Some prospects are not going to interview well. They're going to put them on the virtual board, on the Zoom board. Some of these quarterbacks are not going to perform as well as teams want them to. And so there's going to be some shifting here uh, in the next month and a half. But I'm, I'm just telling you that even within that shifting, especially when it comes to figuring out offensive, uh, figuring out what defenses are trying to do to you, uh, being able to talk to talk and just go back and forth with the head coach and offensive coordinator about what you've seen on the field, why you made this decision, what your best game was, what your worst game was. I think Mac Jones is going to come out well. He's going to ace those tests. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us. 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.